do 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 Hey. We got some more Star Wars toys to open. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I love Boba Fett. He's my favorite. I can't help it. Today, we have a whole bunch of figures to open for the Mandalorian. I figured, why not have one video getting his crew together? So today, that's what we're going to do. And also, I've been dying to get my hands on these to have these figures go with my skip. So this is a vintage collection three-pack of some of Jabba's favorites to go on the skiff. So I figured we'd open these and open these one by one. So let's see. First we have over here, we have Grief Cargo, we have Quill, we have Din Djarin, the Mandalorian, and the Child. This is a Tard exclusive, very hard to get, but I walked in at the right time and the right day and they had they just stocked up. So I grabbed them while I could. This I had to order. Um, I missed out on it, the original, I guess, run or printing, whatever, whatever you want to call them for figures. Um, I'm a comic book guy. I'm sorry. I say second run, whatever. They re-released these. I got them from um, Entertainment Earth, and I'm very happy they finally got here. So I've been dying to put these guys on my skiff, but we got to open them up first. And then over here, we have IG-11 in the old school packaging. I don't know if they're going to bring it back on the new packaging or not, but figured might as well open up on this. He was a Best Buy exclusive, but again, uh from entertainment earth they were able to get their hands on them and they shipped me a copy and i know whether you agree with the controversy or not or you're glad she's gone sad she's gone we have the lovely cara dune okay um and i know this figure is going up in price but i still want this figure to go with my mando crew on my shelf so let's start opening these guys and see how they look all right, so the first one that we're going to be taking a look at is the Tard exclusive Din Djarin, the Mandalorian, and the Child. Um, so if you look at the front of the packaging, uh, you can obviously see they have the child over here, uh, his pram, uh, some Beskar armor, uh, a fob, uh, and it comes with uh, Din Djarin in his Beskar armor. Uh, he even has the Mudhorn and Signet on there with his pistol and rifle. Um, Let's go ahead and take them out and look at the packaging. So if you look in the front, obviously you see everything there. You look on the side, you can kind of see the, the image of everyone together. Um, kind of going on to the back, you get that blurb of Din Djarin. There's a side on top, you have the regular stuff. And on the bottom, you have the barcode and all that regular stuff. So. All right, guys. So he doesn't look terrible. If uh, you remove his helmet here, oh, it's a little tight. If you remove his helmet, you can see Pedro Pascal. Um, not a very good face sculpt. Um, I gotta say, I'm disappointed. I've heard the rumors. Uh, this is the first Mandalorian Black Series Din Djarin that I'm opening. Um, so I'm very disappointed with him. Um, he doesn't have the best... He's got some good articulation, don't get me wrong, the detail's there. But it's a struggle to get him to, into any pose. Um, he can either have his cloth cape or poncho, whatever that is, or the jetpack, you can't do both. Um, it just doesn't work. So the jetpack is, is it, it almost looks like a copy of uh, Django's jetpack that he would wear. Um, and there's almost, I mean, the detail is nice on this, but there's no colors. It's just molded gray or silver plastic. Um, the cape does not work if you put that on. It's either flying out behind him or it's just not on it won't it, there's no in between with that in the jetpack so i'm sorry you have to make a choice one or the other um the face sculpt not not too happy about that it, it makes him look a little thicker than he normally is now again when when this came out i know people were talking about maybe he was laying on his back ig11 was giving him that back to spray or whatever he's a little thick uh, <laughs> um there's no other way around it uh the best scar um, little tiny pieces, you know, it is what it is. Um, I thought they'd be shinier, have a little bit more detail. Again, they're just like gray or silver. Um, not very shiny either. It's just a little piece of plastic. Um, so I feel like those are going to be very easily lost when someone purchases this set or down, a, down the road or something along those lines. Um, so I feel like that's what's probably going to happen with this set. Um... Other than that, it takes a while to get him in a pose. Um, the child, 
or Grogu um, isn't as articulated as the last one, believe it or not. So his arms are actually stuck in this position. You can't move his arms. His hands, surprisingly, you can move and, and, and twist. Um, and his head has articulation as well. So both of his hands have articulation. His head has articulation. Um, the feet are solid in there. Um, whereas if I recall, we have the other Black Series um, child that you could buy on their own, and they're both pretty much the same size. Uh, this child that we got with the build-up pack here, um, he's got a little bit more paint on his head to kind of highlight, I guess, the gray hairs already. Um, but this, this child already has more articulation, like the original Black Series release. And in that one, even his feet are articulated. Not very well, but his feet are articulated, his arms are articulated. Now you can't do a lot with them, but you can move them a little bit more. So this child is already beating this one. So I'd recommend getting this separate. The pram is cool. Um, it's got some good detail on the inside, which I do like. Um, the top comes off so you can put the child in, but even putting the child that you got with this set, when he's standing, it doesn't look like he fits properly. His head is over. You can't like put it in over and all that. And to lay him down, it doesn't look right either. So, I mean, well, actually that doesn't look too bad. But again, with his hand kind of stuck, you have to turn him sideways to get it closed. So that won't close like that. So that's a little frustrating. Now, looking at uh, the other accessories, the, the fob is pretty cool. Um, but again, it's just gray plastic with black and a red button painted so a little bit disappointing i would actually recommend don't don't be too upset if you can't find this in stores guys the the only accessories that you would be missing out on are the pram which is good to have but this grogu doesn't fit in there um, the grogu that comes with this pack i think it is not as superior as the previous one that was released i like the first one better and um other than that, if you just get the regular release of Din Djarin, the helmet doesn't come off, but I don't like this face sculpt. Um, the face sculpt for the vintage collection is a whole lot better. He's battle damaged. Um, his Beskar has like marks on it and everything. Um, so I would recommend that version over this. And I think even on eBay, it's cheaper than this. Um, so I would recommend going with the uh, Walmart exclusive instead of this Black Series one. Um, and don't be too upset if you can't get this one at Target. Just get the regular release off of Big Bad Toy Store or Entertainment Earth or Megalopolis. One of those places. All right, let's see what we got next. All right, guys, next up we have IG-11. Now, like I said, I believe this was a uh, Best Buy exclusive when it first came out. Uh, I missed out on it on the first run. Uh, so I was, you know, hoping this would come back in stock or go to different retailers, which it eventually did. And I finally got one. So I'm very excited to open him up. I know collectors that have previously opened him up say that he's not the greatest action figure. Um, IG-88 had issues, especially with the joints and standing. Um, but again, I'm excited to have a full Mandalorian crew and have them up on the shelf. So I've never opened up IG-88 either. So let's open IG-11 and see how he looks. And guys, I see why this was not a favorite figure for everybody. Um, I have to use a figure stand um, to get him to stand upright, and even then it's a struggle. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know if it's because he was in the packaging for so long, um, but he does not want to stand up. So um, he looks fantastic, like visually fantastic. Um, each of his weapons has... Um, different points that you can connect them in uh, and he's almost got like little pegs and I, I can see that this is all reused from IG-11 which is matching up with what everyone told me so <sighs> not the best figure look wise he's got it down pat that's IG-11 love him um, downside is he won't stand without this stand uh, uh, assistance so um, I'm happy to have him. The articulation, it's not great. It's not terrible. I really like these rubber parts over the joints, especially the elbow joints. Um, so he looks good. He just doesn't stand well. Um, happy to have him with the rest of the crew. Again, I didn't think I'd have the chance to get him, 
Um, I think the weapons are even the same as IGL 88s. Um, but don't quote me on that. I don't have that figure and I don't remember what he looked like from when I was a kid last time I had a 3.75 version of him. But IG-11, for the most part, I'm happy to have him. He's going to look great with the rest of the crew. Um, just disappointed he doesn't stand um, as good as I was hoping. Uh, he does have a spot for maybe holding one of these guns in a holster on his back. Um, see, I'm, I'm even terrified to touch him or breathe on him. I feel like he's just going to fall over. Um, but his knees doesn't have a lot of motion there. I'm probably literally just going to just display him like this and that's it and try not to breathe on him. Put him back in a corner so if he falls backwards he can lean up against something. So <laughs> so um yeah, that's IG11. Let's go to the next one. All right guys. So, next up on opening we have Grief Karga. So, Grief Karga, this is his season 1 costume. Black Series got season 1 and the Vintage Collection got season 2. Um there's been some talk about that who wanted, you know, if they wanted him the same costume through all the lines or if they're going to switch it up or if they're going to swap it later on. That's my guess. I think that they're going to put his season two costume in the Black Series later on and then his season one in the Vintage Collection later on. So we'll see what happens, but that's my uh, educated guess. But anyway, looking at Grief Karga, this is what he looks like in the front. Here's the side of the package with the mural. There's the back. There's a side, there's a top with the window light to let light in, and then there's the bottom with the barcode and all the legal stuff. So let's open them up and see what we got. All right, and we have Carl Weathers as Grief Karga himself right here with his dual wielding pistols. So again, this is uh, Grief Karga from season one of The Mandalorian, and uh, he comes with two uh, handheld pistols, and he can either hold them like that or store them in his holsters. He's got holsters on either side. Um, it, it, it has single jointed uh, elbows and knees, which isn't much of an issue. Um, actually, I was noticing when his arms were straight out, um, it almost looked seamless with, with the sculpt of the figure. A uh, really, really good sculpt. Uh, I was surprised at how, how it looked. Um, so again, bending the elbows, it kind of breaks it up a little bit, but it still looks, looks good. Um, the paint uh, application on the face with that facial real technology, throws it off a little bit for me. Um, not quite Carl Weathers. They gave it a good shot, it's pretty close, but there's that shiny sheen whenever they do the facial real technology lately. Um, not a big fan of that. Um, other than that, this is a solid figure. Even the detail on the pants, the boots, everything, if they did a wash on the pants, all that detail would pop, but again, it's it's the costume, it's how it is. Um, they're not going to put a wash on it. He's got this uh, rubbery cape-like material on. He's got a pretty cool belt. Uh, very textured, very detailed. Again, the face throws it off for me a little bit, but if he's on the shelf looking at it from a distance, that's Carl Weathers' as Grief Karga. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, so I think it's a good buy, a good pickup. Uh, it's definitely going to look good on the shelf with all the rest of my Mandalorian characters. All right, so next up in our Mandalorian box opening, we have Queel. I believe it's Queel. Don't quote me on that. My pronunciation skills are terrible. Um, but he was one of the major characters in season one of The Mandalorian. Love this character. Not so much in season two, but I'm not going to give away any spoilers. So get caught up on The Mandalorian. Why are you watching this when there's still so much to see? Working on season three right now. Um, but this is uh, Queel. Very excited to get this character. Uh, this was sent from Hasbro directly, and I'm a little disappointed that it's got a little little boo-boo at the top. Come on, Hasbro. If I'm an inbox collector, that's not good. Um, but anyway, it's his Quill for the Black Series. This is him on the front of the package. This is the side. This is the back where we have a description. We have the other side, and then at the top we got the skylight, and on the bottom we have the barcode with all the legal stuff. So let's open him up and see how he looks. Out of the packaging, here is Quill. So again, I am, I don't want to say I'm impressed. He's a good looking figure. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, he comes with one accessory, which is a blaster. Uh, he can either hold it or string it across his shoulder, which I kind of have him doing right now. It looks a little bit better uh, when he's with the rest of the crew. I may have him hold it in his arms or his, his hands, um, depending on how I'm feeling. One of the coolest things, I don't know why I like this so much, um, but... <laughs> But his his hat, 
you can take it off and he is very bald. I don't remember if he does that in the show or not, but it just makes me so happy just seeing his bald head like that. And he's got, you know, the, the hair on the back and stuff. I know he's an Ugnaught, I know, but I really thought the, the helmet was gonna stay on him, but uh, that makes me happy. I don't know what, I don't know why that just seeing, you know, bald quill, it just, it made my day. So I wasn't expecting it. Also, uh, he's got this scarf and backpack. They're, they're molded plastic pieces. They're loose. Uh, so they're not really attached to him in any way except for his head being on his shoulder. So if you want, you can probably take off his head, remove the backpack and scarf. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it on him. Um, but it's an option you have. The great thing with the, about the Black Series is you can do things like this. You can remove the helmet. You can um, take that off and, and, and work with them how you want. Um, there's a lot more freedom with the Black Series because they're larger than the 3.75. But overall, I'm I'm... Like I said, I'm not impressed with him. He's a good figure. He's going to be a good addition to the rest of uh, the Mandalorian crew. Um, not happy or disappointed that he's so small. doesn't come with that much for 20 bucks because the Black Series makes up for it some other times where it's a larger figure uh, in the regular release line and they're still 20 bucks. So that may change, uh, but right now I'm okay with this for now. Ooh, controversy! We have Cara Dune for the Black Series. Um, so whether you've heard the rumors or not, or the controversy or not, I, I don't know how you haven't heard about this With if you're a fan of Star Wars and you're watching this channel, but Gina Carano was let go from The Mandalorian. She played Cara Dune, this character, uh, in seasons one and two of The Mandalorian. She was well-received by fans, um, and then she was let go by Lucasfilm, and she wasn't told. She found out about it over social media, um, so they kind of, it, it was, you know, there's probably some other stuff that we're never going to fully know. So just based off of the stuff that we know, I think it was unprofessional just to release her or, or, you know, have her find out when we found out about it and not at least call her, send an email or even a text message like, Hey, you're fired. You know, that's still sucky, but, um, it's less, um, I guess less of a shock to find out from, you know, the news that you're fired than at least getting some sort of notification. But neither here nor there, she was fired for whatever reason. I recommend going and watching the Ben Shapiro interview with her. Uh, it's a really good interview. Um, whether you agree with why she was fired or not, we're never really gonna know if there was some other stuff going on behind the scenes or not. Who knows? We're never gonna get the full story. But regardless, I liked the character Cara Dune. Um, Gina Carano did a very good job portraying that character in a series. And I liked the character. Forget about this real world stuff. Let's talk about the character Cara Dune. Um, now this figure has shot up in price a lot lately um, because with all that controversy, they stopped producing Cara Dune figures, whether it's for the vintage collection or black series, they stopped it, period. Um, so that's why these have shot up. We were hoping at least I was hoping they would re-release this figure with different packaging so it would go in the mural of the Mandalorian so you could have her picture with all the characters. But with everything and all the controversy, that's not going to happen. Um, and that's why this figure is still in the old packaging. This was one of the first figures released for the Mandalorian. Um, so this was the older style packaging. I'm not a fan of this. It reminds me of The Last Jedi. I wasn't a fan of that movie. They did Luke dirty. Um, regardless of you like that movie or not, I, I wasn't a fan. Um, but anyway, uh, this is Cara Dune. That's why we're here. This packaging reminds me of Last Jedi. That's why I brought that up. So anyway, this is the old packaging. Not a lot going on with this. I like the new packaging, except for that angle on the side. It sucks displaying those on the shelf. Um, but I do like that packaging more overall. But anyway, back to this figure, this is the old packaging. So if you look here on the front, this is what it looks like on the front. Turning it over to the side, you can see it is number 101 from the old collection. Turning it onto the back, you get one of those um, brief descriptions with some other stuff. On the other side, it says Cara Dune and it's, it's spread out a little bit more. On the top, it is completely black. And on the bottom, there is a barcode with legal stuff. And on mine, I have a big old sticker because this figure was hard to find. So I had to eBay it way back in the day. Um, and I'm glad I did because I paid close to cost. Um, not anywhere near what it's going for now. Um, and I'm not going to buy anything for what it's going for now. Um, but 
if you buy something and you want to open it regardless of what it's valued or not if it makes you happy do what makes you happy as long as it's not hurting anybody else um but this is mine i bought it when i you know when it came out uh, I didn't pay anything astronomically for it. And opening it up is going to make me happy because I want Cara Dune with the rest of the crew of The Mandalorian. So with any, without any more of me, you know, talking and all this other stuff, let's go ahead and open her up. All right, everybody. And here she is out of the package, uh, Cara Dune herself. And this is 100% Gina Carano. Um, <laughs> if they had a vendetta against her or they wanted to wipe her off, it's because this figure looks exactly like her. I mean, her face was on the packaging, just like Carl Weathers for Grief Carga and all that. But this is Gina Carano in an action figure, which is how it's supposed to be. But when I say that, the facial real technology that they use for Grief Carga, as you saw, it, it's shiny in the face um, when they applied it. This, it looks like it has that facial real technology, but it's not shiny. It doesn't take you out of looking at the figure's face. Um, and I think that's a big factor in this. Uh, if you look at the figure, you want to see that character. And that's fine. Um, but this also looks like the actress that played this character. So if you look at a figure and it looks like the actor, that's good because that the actor is portraying that character. This figure is Gina Carano as Cara Dune. No ifs, hands, or buts about it. Uh, the accessories that it comes with. She has a pistol that goes into a holster on her right side. She's got a knife, which I thought was kind of rare for Star Wars characters that use, you know, blasters and, and, and you know, all different kinds of rifles or, or guns. But she had a knife, which I thought was really cool. Um, her heavy gun as well that she uses in Season 1 and Season 2 is also included. Um, so... The articulation, she's double-jointed, highly, highly articulated. Um, the, f the face sculpt we already talked about is phenomenal. Uh, the paint application is also really, really good. She has battle damage. There's silver marks on her armor. Her armor looks really good. I don't see any paint mishaps on mine. Um, the tattoos on her arms and on her face, they look how they looked in the show. Uh, so this figure, it would be a must-buy if it was on the racks somewhere. Um, and I know recently they had those exclusives, the credit collection at Target, they had the Cara Dune exclusive. I'm glad I got a copy of it when I did, or, or my, my, uh, figure, but that would be a must buy if it, you know, it, it still looks good, but to have this figure, to have this face sculpt on a figure, whether she is recast or not, it's going to be that actress or, or if, you know, they don't, that's going to be that figure. This figure is Gina Carano as Cara Dune. The next figure will be so-and-so as Cara Dune. If they decide to recast her down the road, I, I hope they don't. I hope they just add in other characters. And she has her footstep in Star Wars, and that's that's it. It's two seasons, but that's that's her contribution, which I, I did like the character. The character was well, well received by me. Um, but if this is all it is in Star Wars, um, and I have this figure, I'm happy. So like I said, if it makes you happy to open these, open the figures, play with them. It's okay. It, you know, there's still collectibles because this figure out of the box is still selling for a lot. Um, but if it makes you happy, do what makes you happy at the end of the day. And opening her up and actually seeing the articulation, I've been wanting to open this figure up for a while. So I'm glad I waited and I got to open it with you guys, but it made me happy opening this up. So do what makes you happy. That's a good moral for this video. Do what makes you happy. All right, so we have one more thing to open. I guess three more things. So let's go ahead and head over to that. All right, guys, so the last thing that I have is this Skiff Return of the Jedi action figure three pack. Now, I was late to the game collecting vintage collection and Black Series. I would, you know, if I saw one that really jumped out at me, I'd snag it and, and hang it up. You know, that looks cool. Here, let's pop this here. Um, it, it was quite recently that I really got into it heavily. Um, but I, I really enjoyed collecting. I like, um, the articulation. I opened up one or two and I was floored at, at how, how articulated they are. Cause when I was a kid, I had the power of the force figures and three, you know, they had five points of articulation. They could do this, do this. And with those figures, it looked like they were all on steroids. So these were the figures that I wanted to see. The ones that looked like they were from the movie that I saw as a kid. Um, 
and that's what I wanted. So the cool thing about Star Wars is there's so many, you know, characters that are on screen for maybe a, a second or more. Um, but then fans or writers or other people go out and they make a huge backstory for these characters. Well, the great thing about this, you know, hobby is they sometimes make figures of all those characters. So that's what they have here. So these Big, or these characters were on screen for a little bit longer. This was Return of the Jedi. These characters were on a skiff um, during the, the Han Solo rescue scene. Now, like I said, I missed out on these originally because I, I kind of jumped in and this was selling for a lot, a lot, a lot. And I wasn't going to pay it because it was expensive. But luckily, uh, Entertainment Earth, I don't know if they got a restock or a reorder or what, but they got this back in. So when I saw that... I was able to get my hands on a skiff and I was able to get my hands on these figures. So. All right, guys. So here they are out of the packaging. And so vintage collection, 152, 153, and 154. They look awesome. Uh, I am really torn because I want to hang these up on the wall like this. I have a whole like the top of uh, my, my room that I'm in right here that I'm recording in. Uh, I just have vintage collection all along the top, and then I have black series on the top over here and black series on that whole wall. Um, so these guys would look great up there with the rest of my collection, but I really think that they belong on the skiff. Um, so this one, oh geez, uh, uh, this is Vidane, the skiff pilot. So he is 152. Um, that's an awesome card back. I love that. Uh, I never had versions of these guys in any other collection of Star Wars, so I'm very happy to have these in general. Um, this is Vizam, uh, and there's no other readout on him. These are all in Return of the Jedi uh, card backs, and this is uh, VC-153. And VC-154 is Brock Starsher. Starsher. And this is the guy that I didn't even recognize. So... Um, yeah, I'm excited. We're going to get some close-ups of these uh, so you guys can take a look at them as well. Um, very happy to have these in the collection. I'm so excited to open these. Uh, let's let's get cracking. All right, guys. So the first one I have is Vidane Skiff Pilot, and he's awesome. Uh, <laughs> really good articulation. He is, he, he looks, he's going to look perfect on the skiff. Um, very excited to put him on there. Uh, he doesn't come with a lot of accessories. He comes with this blaster, which is the standard uh, Jabba's Palace blaster. Um, it's kind of the one that Han Solo uses to shoot the tentacle from uh, the Sarlacc pit off of Lando's leg when it's going to eat him. Um, so great figure. Um, I love the paint uh, application on his arms on his shirt. Uh, they gave him almost like a, a red wash, so it looks like it's nice and dirty. I love that because it brings out all the detail on it. Um, and one of the cool features is his helmet thing comes off. It's like a helmet with like a cloth to kind of keep him hydrated, I guess, in the hot sun on Tatooine. Um, but the detail is just amazing on this guy. So uh, definitely, definitely going to look fantastic on the skiff. And he's going to look great in the collection. All right, next up we have 153 from the Vintage Collection, Vizam. And he looks fantastic again. Uh really 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 like the detail completely different design uh compared to Vidane, which i really like um the blue really pops he still has colors that are consistent with a sandy environment uh, i'm really excited he had a really cool card back which he's shooting a gun it looks like it's actually on jabba's sail barge um and he comes with that gun which is pretty cool um but it looks like that there's like a ball and socket that it's supposed to attach to and it doesn't quite fit in there um, so let me know if I'm doing this wrong or if it's not correct, but I mean, it still kind of goes in there. It's just not a snug fit. Um, but maybe that's how it's supposed to be, but it looks like this goes on the edge of either the, the skiff or, uh, Java sail barge and he's like a gunner. So that's awesome. Awesome accessory because this goes and assists with a vehicle being more movie accurate. So I'm very happy to have this accessory. He also comes with a Jabba's palace pistol, just like the one Han used uh, that we talked about earlier, which I really like because, again, I didn't know that he issued pistols to everybody. So it's a standard Jabba pistol. This probably got a specific name. I'm not sure of what it is. Uh, if you know what it is, uh, the technical term, put it in the comments down below. But otherwise, uh, his helmet uh, cloth item does come off. Fits a little bit snugger than uh, Bidane's. 
um, but I do like it, especially with the ability to take it off and he looks like a completely different character. But I think he looks great. He's definitely gonna be a gunner using this on my skiff. All right, let's open the last one. All right, guys, for our last one, we have number 154 from the Vintage Collection, Brock Starsher, if I'm pronouncing that right. I could be completely off on that. If I am, let me know. Um, but he's a fantastic figure. I like the white jumpsuit. Um, he looks really, really cool. Completely different than the other characters. And this black gloss helmet is really interesting. Um, his weapons are also different. Uh, the other characters had, you know, a silver painted uh, Jabba's Palace pistol. He's got kind of a light brown or it's a brown one with a silver wash over it. Um, so it's it's an interesting one. And he's also got this vibro blade staff um, or spear, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it, he looks great. He's unique compared to all the others that are on uh, the sail barge and skiff that I currently have right now. Um, so I'm really excited to add him to the collection. Uh, even the boots, if you look at his boots, compared to the rest, it's not just painted black. They actually have almost like a, a, a camo effect on there. So it's not just left, like, oh, it's just painted black. It looks really good. And I've never had a close-up view of this character before. So I'm really happy to, you know, just take in the essence of this character and now he's going to stand out that much more for me in return of the jedi so um again i didn't even remember seeing this guy until i looked at this set so i'm really really happy to have this guy in my collection it's going to add to my experience of watching the movie which is you know what we aim for is you know collecting and you know i love star wars and the things that i like i want to have representation of it um, and it enhances my experience watching the movie or shows that come out for that medium, whether it be Batman, comics, Star Wars, any of that. So this actually enhances my experience. Um, so I'm happy to add him to the skiff. Um, so he is our last one that we are unboxing today. So what I'm going to do is we're going to show everything here and we're going to head out. All right, everyone. So I had a blast opening all these with you. Um, from the Vintage Collection to the Black Series, and I even opened this on TikTok, which if you want to see, go to Back Crime the Unknown on TikTok. Um, if I had to pick this Mando or this one, go with the Vintage Collection. Just as articulated, the face sculpt for Pedro Pascal is a whole lot better. It comes with the ice cream maker or safe with the two. It's got a big Beskar block and one individual Beskar, um, I guess, square or rectangle shapes. Uh, his jetpack stays on with the cape, a whole lot easier to work with. This one, it's a pain to pose him. You gotta choose jetpack or cape. You can't have both, and I've never seen him without his cape thing. Um, so that means jetpack is off for me. You get the Beskar and the fob to find the child, but um, the Beskar, it's just, I think most people, if, especially children, are gonna lose the Beskar if they get this set. Um, the pram is fantastic, but the child, uh, it's kind of stuck in that pose. The rest of the figures I love, Cara Dune, uh, her, uh, her figure uh, is amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm sad that some collectors may not have the chance to purchase her, or if they do, it's going to be astronomical. I'm not saying they're finished, they're, like, they're never going to come out with this figure again, um, but due to the Gina Carano situation, it is frustrating. Um, so I'm hoping that they do decide to bring this figure back. I don't know. This is Gina Carano's Cara Dune. So um, I'm really, really happy to have these in the collection. They're going to look great on the shelf together. This vintage collection here, uh, the skiff set, happy, happy, happy to put that on my skiff. It's going to look great. Um, and this Mandalorian is going to look awesome with the rest of the crew as well. Um, so let me know in the comments what you'd like to see uh, future unboxing of, whether it be Star Wars or something else. Um, and how'd you like this? Remember to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And also, I'm also giving kind of not necessarily recommendations, but just a heads up on what's going on. So recently they just launched Star Wars, the uh, High Republic comic series, and they're also issuing books out for that. So they're up to issue three on uh, the High Republic. So what do you guys think about that? I know there's been some controversy of it. People are skipping over it completely. They say it doesn't work. I don't know. I've read the first two issues. By the time this is out, they're going to be up to the third issue, maybe the fourth. Um, so if you guys are reading that, let me know what you think uh, about that, whether you think it's a good direction, bad direction. 
again, politics. Their politics are getting into everything, and I want to get into Star Wars and things like this to escape those politics. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about all that. Have you read or have, have you read? Have you read those comics already, or have you read the book? I haven't read the book, but time is precious, and it's it's tough to find time in between all this and read the books. So let me know in that comment section down below. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Back Herm out.